Hi there, we're taking another look at a Gantt chart visual today for Power BI. Uh, I think it's a very cool, very precise little visual and uh, hopefully you'll like it too. I'm in Power BI and I have two data sets, or two tables that I want to use in exploring the Apex Gantt chart visual. I have my table, which is a very simple table with just a name and a start and an end date. Uh, and I have an extended uh, visual or uh, extended features table as well, where we have baselines, where we have end date, start date, progress. I already added the Apex Gantt chart visual. You can find it, of course, in the app store. And if I select it, there's a number of things that you can select. Uh, task name, finish date, start date, uh, baseline dates. Uh, those are needed for a visualization here. So task name is the first thing that you do. Uh, it tell, will tell you that there is no date defined. Well, that's true. I haven't added it yet. And if I move them over, the message changes to start and finish date is not valid. Well, that's scary at first, but don't worry. The only thing that you need to do here is make sure that the start date is at the earliest and the finish date is at the latest value. And there you have it. Now you have a first version of your Gantt chart visual. With the projects in there, you can even select them using a filter or deselect them. Uh, you can select the values on the rows themselves. It creates this nice horizontal visualization. There's no multi-select in this section, but that isn't uh, such a big problem, of course. Now there's more things that you can add here and we'll do that in an, just a moment. Um, but let's also take a look at what the visual has to offer in terms of visualization. So we have the Gantt chart fish, uh, section where we have uh, how it governs your hover over. We have a timeline and in the timeline we can mimic what we see and love from Microsoft Project. We have three rows that we can add. Uh, let's add year, quarter and month to the top level or to, to, the, uh, to the visual. And there you see uh, it, it visualizes that roughly the same as Microsoft Project would now you also have grid line options and you can add multiple grid lines to give more clarity if needed. Let's take a look at the legend. The legend tells you, of course, what's on the top. Uh, currently, that's only the current schedule, but we'll see baselines showing up there as well. Now, the date date is interesting. Here, you can set a vertical line on a specific date. And you can even choose to have a measure for that. So we can even select the today date, which is a measure that I created. And once I've done that, you'll see that red line showing up. There's a way to change the date date to uh, another more useful name, such as today. And there's a way to change the title position. So we can have it uh, even inside the uh, visual itself by selecting 10 or even selecting 100 and with 100 is on the third line of our chart. So let's set that back to uh, a more useful uh, time slot or a more useful position. Well, that's maybe a little bit too much and 10 uh, sounds like a good position to be in. And there's something called progress as well. Uh, we'll take a look at that in a moment. And then there's the um, yeah there's there's the uh, column option as well, which we'll also see in just a moment. There's of course the the option to change some colors here. Um, I think a dark color doesn't make sense because the font will disappear. So let's make that a lighter color. And there you have a nice first version of our visual. But there's more that you can do and um, it will be interesting to see what we can add when we have 
when we have a program that we're actually going to look into. Uh, so the program uh, has four projects in it and it has a nice total and earliest date and a total end date. Um, if you add more programs, you would even be able to see and visualize that better and have a full portfolio overview. So I've added the Apex scan chart visual again and let's start populating this, um, this visual with my extended features table. So we have the program, the project and the task. So this is two layers extra compared to the previous section. Um, now I also had the is milestone because I thought that that was needed but actually it wasn't needed because the tool itself will know when you have a start date and a finish date on the same day it will automatically start changing that to a milestone. Now remember to have your start date being the earliest and your end date being the latest. Now we already have a program, we have a project in there, we have four projects in there with a nice dark blue and a green value for each of our projects and with milestones already showing up really nice. Now there's also a tooltip option uh, and I kind of screwed up the uh, tooltip here because you'll see two lines of projects here um, and that's because the name of the task was similar but we also have the option to look at task 3 which is unique and that is actually what I wanted to show you with the tooltip option. So you'll see project 3 with the start date and finish date and baseline dates and if we move back to our uh, slides or our report pages, you'll see the report page of the tooltip being our source for that uh, little extra pop-up visualization. So let's return to our program slide or page, program page, and let's start adding some extra features here. Uh, so for now, we only only added the program, project, and task layer. Uh, there's more that we can do with this visual. We can start adding more uh, data to the system, such as the percent complete, which is, of course, a very important thing when you're talking about projects. And if I open that up again with that little uh, triangle, you'll see that there is a darker line until the progress, uh, and there is even a visualization of the percentage of the progress that we're making. Uh, so there's even a project that's ahead of time, which is of course excellent. So this is the first additional feature or extended feature that I wanted to share. There's more information that you can add to the Apex Gantt chart visual. And that resides in the baselines. So the baselines are a very important concept within project management. You always want to have a baseline, at least one, where you have the option to uh, visualize or represent the original intent of your schedule and where you're actually at in the real schedule uh, scenario or in the current schedule scenario. So once again, let's uh, populate this uh, these fields with start date, finish date, uh, the program, project and tasks need to be in there. And as you can see, I have multiple baseline fields as well. Make sure that these are date fields and make sure that they're formatted the right way. You can see that on the left side with the table that I have. Now let's add progress for good measure as well. And let's make sure that we have everything set to start dates being the earliest and end dates being the latest. And I'll just speed up this little process here where of course it doesn't really make sense to wait for me to populate all those values. We're already seeing the results of our baseline start and finish dates popping up co correctly. We, now before we jump into the visual itself you can see that the baseline 1 is fully populated but baseline 2 only for the first two projects. So that means 
that we'll want to see baseline 2 only for those bottom two projects, which is correct, project 1 and project 2. And it's immediately clear what the difference is between project uh, current schedule, baseline, and baseline 2. So this is a very nice visual. Um, we can also see that I've added the start date and end date and the percentage complete. That is something that you can populate by the column and you can change these three columns. There's no way to add additionals, so there's no custom column that you can add, but you can flip this on and off and for instance only show the percent complete. Now currently it has that average, but you can of course change the title of that uh, visual for this visual, uh, title of this column for this visualization. So that is the Apex uh, Gantt chart visual. Oh, uh, the percent complete will only visualize on the row itself and it doesn't roll up. So if you want to have that roll up to your program, you'll need to make sure that you have a measure in place so that it also looks at the total project progress as well as the total program progress. Last thing that we need to discuss today is that uh, icon on the top right, get license. Now, as you mentioned, uh, this is a custom visual uh, that is created by the Apex PM apps uh, organization, and they would like to get paid for their work uh, for creating this visual for all of us, which is, uh, I can imagine, only uh, fair. So on the Power BI desktop, the visual will look like you see here today. Uh, it doesn't have any limitations. It doesn't have any watermarks or any annoying things in its visual itself. But the Apex uh, PM apps people are very strict once it comes to the visual on a Power BI service. So that means that once you want to share this visual with the organization and you have that in the Power BI uh, uh, service, um, it won't visualize anything useful for you. And we'll have a moment uh, for it to publish and you will be able to see it for yourself because it won't, uh, won't be pretty. <laughs> so let's... Uh, first start ignoring that the free tile for, uh, for fabric is expiring and let's uh, take a look and here you see the Apex visual, the Apex Gantt chart visual needs a license you can email the, uh, the contacts or get a license yourself and this goes for all of the visuals across uh, the, the, um, the project this is Apex Gantt Chart Visual. You can get a copy of this file uh, if you sign up to the newsletter. And thank you for watching and see you next time.